Hi, I'm Todd Rosenbluth, Head of Research at Vetify, and I'm excited to be talking with iShares and MSCI about low-risk strategies, particularly given that 2022 is one of the more volatile years we've seen in recent history. I'm joined by Lucas Smart of iShares and Mark Carver of MSCI, and we're here to talk about how a minimum volatility strategy and an ESG one can be blended together. Luke, let me start with the first question to you. Could you talk about the relationship between minimum volatility investing and ESG as you see it? Yeah, yeah. And thanks for having us here, Todd. Now, look, when it comes to minvol um, uh, factor investing and sustainable investing, um, what we've seen is substantially increased demand over the past few years. Factor investing's popularity has led to, well, frankly, exponential growth over the past decade. For example, from 2010 through 2021, factor ETF assets have increased by more than 10 times from 51 billion to 649 billion. The minimum volatility style factor is intended for investors that are seeking lower risk uh, as it's historically delivered market-like returns with less risk over economic cycles. Similarly, um, what we've seen is a shift towards a more sustainable investing. Over the past five years, for example, we've seen assets under management in U.S. sustainable assets um, more than triple from 180 billion uh, in 2017 to 635 billion in 2021. Todd, uh, first of all, it's good to see you. I think building on a little bit of what uh, Luke is saying, that in addition to the client demand, which is so evident, minvol, minimum volatility, and sustainable investing share another commonality, and that is that companies that are less volatile also tend to, on average, have better environmental, social, and governance characteristics, which allows investors in minimum volatility to also express that sustainable view. So you might say that the bottom line of this conversation today is that the two investment styles make a worthy pair. A minimum volatility ESG investment strategy has that dual objective that many investors are seeking, which is to reduce volatility while also considering the principles of ESG. So Mark, let's stick a little bit more closely with that about the risk attributes of an ESG minvol strategy. Yeah, well, the, the minimum volatility ESG approach allows investors to pursue both the risk, re uh, risk return aim of reducing volatility and the potential outcome of better ESG characteristics and lower carbon emissions. Adding on to what Mark was saying, uh, the strategy uh, aims to create a low risk portfolio that improves its ESG score and reduces its carbon footprint relative to the broad market. ESMV's index methodology aims to reduce carbon exposure by 30% and improve its MSCI ESG score by 20% relative to its parent index, the MSCI USA uh, index. If the low volatility component um, uh, of the strategy that uh, aims to provide market-like exposure with less risk overall. Now, many investors in minimum volatility strategies are keenly focused on that aspect, on risk reduction. And as a risk reduction tool, USMV, um, the non-ESG counterpart to ESMV, has had a standard uh, deviation that is 18.5% lower than the S&P 500 index since the fund's inception. And the idea isn't new. Our flagship minimum volatility suite, which includes not just USMV, but EFAV and EEMV, recently celebrated its 10-year anniversary. So a good history here of helping investors managing risk. Well, happy anniversary, Luke. What, what do you think your key takeaway is for ESG-oriented minimum volatility considered investors? Thank you for the uh, happy anniversary wishes. Um, I think the key takeaway here is that by adopting a dedicated ESG minimum volatility investment strategy, investors can efficiently access stocks with potentially lower volatility, better ESG scores, and relatively lower, lower carbon intensities relative to traditional minimum volatility strategies. Mark, I'll give you the last word. What, what's your key takeaway? Uh, thank you, Todd. I think the biggest takeaway for me is the potential for lower market drawdowns. Maybe the most important element of a minimum volatility strategy is that potential to reduce risk relative to the overall equity market, allowing investors to experience potentially less drawdown, lower volatility, and thus remain invested. Well, thanks, Luke. Thanks, Mark, for sharing your insights with the end investors. Excited for this new strategy. Thanks for having us. Thank you for having us.
Visit www.ishares.com to view a prospectus, which includes investment objectives, risks, fees, expenses, and other information that you should read and consider carefully before investing. Investing involves risk, including possible loss of principal. Thank you.